Hello and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Today I will be trying to figure out what the heck a headless mumby is. Actually, to tell you the truth, I have no clue what a headless mumby is. I haven't looked it up. Um, it's the name of a brewery, a local microbrewery here in Olympia, and uh, they make pretty good beer. I have reviewed their Vizzini Pilsner. I don't recall if that review has gone up live yet. Um, schedules for these are kind of up in the air based on things, <laughs> reasons. It's nice having a backlog, that's for sure. It takes a lot of the pressure off. Um, anyways, today I will be enjoying, for not the first time, Headless Mumby's Sound Check Dark Lager. Uh, my wife and I first tasted this beer in August of 2021 when we visited our very first uh, brew festival, the Olympia Brew Fest. And... Um, her favorite beer there that day was this Czech dark lager. Neither of us had had a dark lager before, and uh, it was a pretty darn tasty beer. A dark lager, what sets it apart from other dark beers? First off, ale versus lager. A lot of the beers we have these days, especially in the um, in the micro and, and craft brew scene, are lagers. Sorry. <laughs> Starting off on the wrong foot already. A lot of the beers we have these days in the craft and micro brew scenes are primarily ales. Pale ales, India pale ales, red ales, amber ales, uh, porters and stouts are both ales. Ales are generally more complex forms of beer or more complexly flavored, but they are also newcomers. They are also the newcomer on the scene regarding historic beer styles. Uh, in ancient times, it was all about lagers. Macro beers, particularly American macro beers, are mostly lagers. Budweiser, the great American lager. Um, it's a pale lager. But that is not to say that there was this big switch from you know, all good beer is ale and all crap beer is lager. Um, many of the historic German styles are lagers. The, the Dunkels, um, heck, the, the Merzens, the Oktoberfest beers, those are lagers. And this is specifically a dark lager. Now, when you think pale ale, okay, so pale speaks to not necessarily the color of the beer, but to the color of the malt that was used to create the beer, which resulted in the beer's flavor. So let's say it primarily refers to the malt color and then just kind of by extension refers to the beer color. Amber ales, same thing. It is an amber or a red malt that is used to produce those red and amber tones in the beer. Brown ales, dark ales, same thing. It's the exact same thing on lagers. In fact, lagers and ales are both made from malts. The primary difference between them is the temperature, the relative temperature at which they are brewed, and the type of yeasts that are used to brew them. So this is a dark lager, that is, it is brewed using darkly roasted malts. Historically, all malts were darkly roasted. Back more than 200 years ago, just about every single beer was darkly colored, at the very least red or brown, and often far darker. They were also universally smoky because there were not indirect heating technologies developed back then that allowed the, the malt grains to be roasted without being smoked. And I think that plays in particularly with this Czech Dark Lager, because it seems like Headless Mumby is trying to recreate um, not necessarily f a faithful historic beer representation, but a modern beer that brings some very historic character to it. Dark Lagers didn't always disappear. This is called a Czech Dark Lager for a reason. Czech 
uh, Brewing has had dark lagers for quite a long time. You will also see them referred to as Dunkels, which means dark in German, or um, Schwarzbiers, which means black in German. Uh, Schwarz is, is black. Uh, those are also typically relatively smoky, generally speaking. Uh, but that history or explanation aside, let's get into this one in particular. It pours a very nice dark brown. Um, you can kind of just see through the edges of the glass, but not very much. It's, it's pretty well dark brown. It's not black, it's definitely brown. Uh, but it's it's dark. It is a dark lager. Um, you can smell a smokiness and also an interesting, I think it, it kind of a brininess to this, which is quite intriguing. And I don't know if it's a combination of the, the smokiness and some other characters in there that I'm unable to differentiate, but it does come across as a bit almost... Um, campfire by the seashore but there's not a tide pool nearby so you don't have that like super concentrated weird sea fishiness that that you get it's it's more just an interesting kind of briny smokiness to the nose as the head fades the smokiness fades and it's just uh roastiness dark roasty not not chocolate more um like burned wood, uh, campfire, not campfire smoke, but like campfire the next morning uh, kind of smells. Or burned bread, possibly. It smells dark, which is a good thing. That brininess does carry through in some ways and gives it an interesting, darkly juicy quality. Uh, like first at the, at the outset as you, as you drink it, you might pick up hints of almost a green olive, but those then fade to a really nice, smooth maltiness that's definitely darkly roasted. Uh, so you're getting, um, once again, this kind of campfire. There is also a real nutty finish to this that kind of comes into play five, ten seconds down the road. It's quite tasty. For not being advertised as a smoky beer or a smoked beer, they definitely allowed the, the malt to be smoked, the malts to be smoked as they produce this. It is, it is clearly a smoky beer, and that's a really, really pleasant character in this. Um, it is definitely so loggers loggers tip tend to be tend not always there's exceptions to every rule but tend to be simpler in flavors and this is definitely to the simpler side you're not getting like clear hits of this or clear hits of that um, you're getting this this kind of nice mellow uh, mellow set of flavors that that are there and then they fade nicely to a nice pleasant nutty finish. They all play their part and then they say goodbye and then they're gone. And then you're just left with this maybe uh, like black coffee after breath over the kind of nutty back finish, like back of the, back of the mouth tasty finish. It's a very nice beer. The, the kind of the, the brightness up front makes it really intriguing because you're expecting these like dark, dry, or possibly sweet characteristics, and you're not going to get that sweetness in a lager. It stays to the dry side, but without being like a super clear ground espresso like you would with a porter or a stout, um, without that dark chocolate that you might get. Instead, it's just like this campfire smoke, this uh, maybe, you know, campfire logs the next morning. Uh, you know, there was a campfire here at one time <laughs> kind of character. And, and it's nice and it's pleasant. It's very enjoyable. This is a good beer. This is a good beer. And 
frankly, because it's not so, uh, because it's not a heavy beer, it doesn't have to be for cold weather necessarily. It's definitely fall outside. Fall finally came to the Northwest here a uh, week and a half to, well, two and a half weeks ago now. And it's been rainy. Um, so it's definitely, you know, it, it's great for this time of year, but it doesn't have to be. It could be for any cool evening, even just a cool evening in the summer. And it, I mean, frankly, it wouldn't be out of place at a summer campfire either. So um, don't limit yourself. Like I said, I had this for the first time in August. Granted, August in the Northwest. But still, a warm day in August. And it was good then, and it's good now. Anyways, this has been Headless Mumby Brewing's Sound Check Dark Lager, which is a delicious Czech dark lager style lager, beer style lager, dark. <laughs> and on that note, I'll catch you on the flip side.